Freeman Dyson, The Sun, The Genome, and The Internet, Tools of Scientific Revolutions. In The Sun, The Genome, and The Internet, Tools of Scientific Revolutions, Freeman Dyson explores the power of technology in shaping the future and fostering social justice. The book delves into how science originated from the fusion between philosophical thinking and skilled crafts, and the significance of tool-driven scientific revolutions. Dyson dreams of a world where solar energy, genetic engineering, and the internet work together to create a socially just world, transcending geographic and socioeconomic boundaries. As you step into this summary, you will discover insights into how the development of key technologies can drive scientific revolutions and contribute to a fair society for all. The Power of Useful Science In the book, A Mathematician's Apology, mathematician and professor Godfrey Hardy asserts that science is only useful if it promotes destruction or wealth inequality. However, science can be useful without causing harm. John Randall, a physicist, demonstrated this by inventing the cavity magnetron that gave the Allies an advantage in World War II and later pioneering X-ray crystallography, which led to the discovery of DNA. Randall's work with tools drove scientific revolutions and showed the potential for science to be both useful and beneficial. Science and Craft in the 20th Century Science and craft industries developed separately but became inseparable in the 20th century, with recent scientific revolutions being tool-driven. Skilled crafts were initially threatened by mass production, but the age of computers revived craft industries in software writing. Synthetic viruses may drive a future scientific revolution through their ability to enter cells, discriminate between healthy and malignant cells and turn specific processes on and off. Science has its roots in the fusion of two old traditions, philosophical thinking traced back to ancient Greece and skilled crafts from medieval Europe. Scientific concepts developed from philosophy, while crafts provided the necessary tools. However, until the end of the 19th century, science and craft industries developed along separate paths. The 20th century brought about a change, science and the craft industries became inseparably linked. The computer manufacturing industry, which started as a work of craft, is now considered a functional commodity of the past. However, software writing has seen a resurgence in craft industries. Skilled artisans must work hand-in-hand -hand with programmers to create powerfully functional and visually appealing software. Most scientific revolutions have been driven by tools rather than concepts, and recent discoveries in science came about from new tools and methods. Molecular biologist Fred Sanger, known for developing the technical tools that help decipher the sequence of bases in long strings of DNA, is one of the great toolbuilders of our time. His discovery that, in long strings of genes, the sequence of bases resembled a Mozart duet played by two musicians reading from the same sheet of music, with one playing from top to bottom and the other from the bottom up, was due to his choice of a well-known virus and a new tool. Viruses, which combine standardization with variety, reproducibility with malleability, ruggedness with specificity and precision with cheapness, provide an excellent tool for scientists. If nature had not invented viruses, humans would have had to. Synthetic viruses may even lead to a scientific revolution in the future as they can enter cells and turn specific processes on and off, allowing researchers to examine the result. It may even be possible to design synthetic viruses that distinguish between healthy and malignant cells and destroy the latter. In conclusion, science and craft industries may have followed separate paths until the 20th century, but they have now become inseparable. Recent scientific revolutions were driven by new tools rather than concepts, while skilled crafts have revived in software writing. The future may see a new scientific revolution brought about by synthetic viruses' ability to enter cells and specifically turn on and off cell processes. The Sustainability of Scientific Projects Sustainable scientific projects are cheap enough to continue indefinitely, while unsustainable ones require a significant amount of resources and often mark the end of an era. The example of the Apollo program highlights the unsustainability of expensive projects. However, the cost-effective planet project, 
linking underutilized telescopes for gravitational tomography, is described as opportunistic, spontaneous, and undirected. The Internet and its ability to make a few dollars go a long way is key to its success. The author emphasizes the need for medical scientists to follow the lead of astronomers by inventing their own tools, such as a desktop gene sequencer and protein microscope. These inventions can lead to revolutionizing the study of cells and viruses, but their cost needs to be in line with sustainability. Technology and Social Justice The advancements in solar power, genetic engineering, and the internet hold the potential to create a socially just world where every community can thrive equally. The application of ethics in technology is crucial to achieve this vision. Space travel, on the other hand, is deemed irrelevant. While technology can significantly contribute to social justice, it may come with certain drawbacks, such as dispossessing certain classes of people. Nevertheless, history provides examples of how technology can eliminate unjust class systems. Household appliances and synthetic fabrics are among the technologies that have contributed to creating equality between different social classes. The author emphasizes the importance of technology in promoting social justice and highlights the need for ethical considerations while developing new technologies. Solar Energy for Poverty Reduction This book suggests that the key to sustainable development is the provision of cheap solar energy to rural tropical villages. The author argues that the population explosion and rural poverty must be addressed, and this can be achieved through affordable solar energy systems that can provide enough electricity to power essential appliances such as radios and TVs. However, current costs are prohibitive for most households. The author suggests that genetic engineering could help make solar energy systems cheaper and thus more widely accessible. This book is a must-read for people interested in sustainable development and renewable energy technologies. A Promising Future of Energy Production Energy crops are cheap but inefficient, while photovoltaic collectors are costly yet efficient. However, genetic engineering offers a solution to developing energy-efficient fuel crops. Imagine a forest that could convert sunlight into liquid fuel and deliver it through their roots to underground pipelines. In the future, the energy supply system may consist of a large forest whose various species of trees vary depending on the climate and topography of the area. Suppose the trees converted sunlight into fuel efficiently, landowners could then make up to $10,000 per year per acre from selling fuel. With modern genetic engineering, desirable mutations could be produced in just a few years, making it possible to develop such trees within a few decades. The ultimate goal is to create the perfect balance between energy efficiency and preserving natural forests' beauty while addressing poverty and overpopulation issues that threaten our future. Connecting the Unconnected The Internet is breaking down cultural barriers and making remote areas part of the global economy. With the help of low-orbit satellites and innovative technology like Ricochet, every village can be connected. Paul Barron, the original inventor of the Internet, developed Ricochet as a cost-effective solution with a network of small wireless transmitters and receivers. The teledesic system utilizing 288 satellites has already made it possible to connect any two points on Earth with minimal delay. The last mile problem is challenging, but solutions like Ricochet are bringing the unconnected closer to the rest of the world. The Future of Space Exploration the U.S. space program was driven by competition with the Soviet Union, leading to incompatible objectives. The practical use of space for military and scientific purposes conflicted with the idealistic vision of human adventure beyond Earth, resulting in excessive spending on space science missions and neglected ground-based astronomy. To cut costs in the future, staff should be reduced, and unmanned missions and new launch systems employed. The next 50 years will see a rise in cheap unmanned missions followed by cheap manned missions. Eventually, humans could migrate to the Kuiper Belt, a hospitable location outside of Neptune, using information gathered from unmanned missions and genetically engineered plants. This type of migration is necessary for the diversification of human genomes and lifestyles.
Freeman Dyson's book highlights the potential of solar energy, genetic engineering, and the internet to transform our world and foster social justice. He emphasizes the importance of ethics in guiding technology for the greater good and the crucial role of collaborative human and machine efforts in engineering our future. Through historical and innovative examples, Dyson demonstrates how advancements in technology have the capacity to both empower and marginalize different groups in society. He envisions a future where cost-effective and sustainable scientific projects thrive, enabling the wider population to benefit from progress. Armed with these insights, we can strive to nurture technologies that uplift humanity and collectively build a globally connected, equitable world.